Hey everyone, Mystical Mark here. So this will be your weekly astrology forecast for the week of September 8th to the 14th of 2024. Yes, I am back. I'm sorry for being gone for that bit of a hiatus there. There was just some things I kind of needed to deal with first, I guess. Uh, I do apologize for uh, anybody's astrology reading of which I couldn't complete. Um, anything that I couldn't complete, of course, was fully refunded. I do apologize for that. Uh, I do have readings up again. They are at a more regular price now. I did reduce the time for the readings because I found one hour of simply just me talking is a bit uh, too much, I think. I can get to most of the information in about a half an hour, so that's what I have it set at currently. It's different when it's one-on-one -on -one when you're talking with another person, but when it's just me doing the recording and sending it to you, um, I can kind of get it done a lot more quickly that way. So that's how, kind of how I have it set up. Of course, none of it is set in stone if it needs to, um, if I need to adjust that in the future, I can. Um, I've also limited the amount of readings to a very small amount that I can do so that it's manageable with the kind of stuff that I'm having to deal with right now. So just so everybody is aware, I've kind of taken the time to revamp some things and refigure things out uh, so that I can do this um, in a more, in a way that's kind of conducive to the environment that I'm in right now. So thank you everyone for your patience. I really do appreciate it. I need the time, like I said, to rework everything and kind of figure some stuff out and deal with some other things. But hopefully I'm back and here to stay. Um, and yes, I am back to doing some weekly astrology stuff. Again, not just new moon, full moon. I'm going to try to do this weekly. Of course, if something pans out in one week, it doesn't work, then just come back the next week, right? So just kind of going with the flow here. That's kind of the vibe. That's kind of what I'm feeling guided to do. So um, let's jump right into it. So let's go for this week here. Let me just pull up the chart so I can see it clearly. There we go. So I'll pull up my cheat sheet here for the uh, all the transits. In case you don't know, I just have a little list of everything that happens on each day. All right, so on Sunday, September 8th, uh, looks to be kind of a bit of an interesting day. So I think one of the main things here on this day is this uh, focal point of Mercury. Because um, two things that are happening here is there's a Mercury quincunx Neptune that is speaking on this day. And that's kind of happening a bit earlier. Uh, I can find, find the exact time for you. Uh, 4.54 a.m. Central Time. Uh, and then there's also going to be a bit later in the day, looks like around, let's see, 10.57 p.m. on the same day is going to be this Mercury and Quincunx to Pluto. So Pluto has retrograded back into Capricorn. Um, it's going to, Pluto I believe goes direct October 11th and then uh, comes back into Aquarius November 19th. So through this, this is just a, this last little bit of Pluto and Capricorn that uh, we'll see in basically our lives, right? Unless somehow we're able to live for another 200 and some years, then maybe we'll see it again. But um, if that, if you know, that's not possible, then this will be the last time that we'll see it. And of course, this is that transformation of those old structures, those old things of control, all that old stuff that just needs to fall away. Right, and so with this, Pluto here is in this sextile to Neptune, and those planets in sextile with these two quincunxes to Mercury is also what forms uh, what's called a yod or a finger of God. So that's why I'm saying this is kind of like this focal point here uh, for this Sunday. With quincunxes, again, they can be quite frustrating. Uh, it involves sometimes an aspect of integration, sometimes it can feel like it's uh, one or the other. Right. Um, however, Mercury here at 28 degrees of Leo getting ready to move back into Virgo. I say back because Mercury was retrograde, was in Virgo, retrograded back into Leo. Then goes into Virgo. Mercury also leaves shadow this week as well. Right. So we're approaching the final end of this Mercury retrograde. So, but there is this, uh, this bit of a yod that is occurring here. So, and I feel like this is with Mercury in Leo, this is about kind of like really that expression, that self-expression. Although in a lot of ways, I think in terms of especially like mundane astrology, Leo is what's bringing things to light, right? The sun is what rules Leo. 
So it's kind of like shining a light on this Mercury area. So there could be an aspect of communication or communication coming through. Um, and it's regarding this sextile of Pluto and Neptune. So this can deal a lot with like secrets, secretive type things. Pluto is the modern ruler of Scorpio. Scorpio can be quite secretive, but it's also quite revealing, revealing of those secrets. Right? Scorpio is like that depth, it can see through the veil. It's almost like that psychic energy, you can see it. It's going to give it to you straight, it's not going to butter it up for you. Scorpio kind of gets really to the point and can see through the BS a lot of the time. Uh, Neptune, the modern ruler of Pisces, and Neptune is in Pisces, um, obviously can deal with illusion. Uh, dreams, the fog, not seeing things clearly, secrets that are kind of hidden in that sense as well. Um, both of these planets are in fact retrograde. Mercury is now direct, but still in a shadow period. So with this, I think we're kind of dealing with stuff that, excuse me, has either already occurred, maybe is already in an awareness that now needs to come out. It's kind of going over these old spaces that's like, hey, you really need to kind of put your focus here on maybe bringing awareness to something or communicating something that that's either an expression of self or it's either bringing something to light in some kind of a way. The fact that this is dealing with kind of maybe secretive stuff. So this could be also be like behind the scenes stuff that's maybe like coming out in some way in that sense. And this can be quite frustrating and maybe require an ounce of integration somehow in some way here. This is, like I said, with this Pluto retrograde, this is like the final destruction of like this old, old outdated structures, old outdated aspects of control, all that, all that crap, right? That's no longer serving us and rebuilding like new foundations and new things. And of course, with Pluto being retrograde, this is going over these old spaces, things that we know that have had to have, that we know that need to occur, shall we say. Right? Same with all of it's we're kind of dealing, like I said, this this retrograde energy here, Mercury's in shadow, is the stuff we kind of like already know that really needs to be brought to the light. And with this yod finger of God, it's like pointing at it, being like, hey, you need to be aware of this Mercury. They're like aware of the details, aware of what's in your mind, your thoughts, aware of communication or communicating these types of things. And maybe what has been going on behind the scenes, what needs to be transformed uh, in that sense or something that needs to be really brought to light ultimately to destroy whatever restriction and structure or whatever that that needs to be let go of because it was an illusion or it was something that was hidden, something that was we were being told but it was a falsity in, in some kind of a way and it's bringing that to light. And again, that can bring that kind of frustrating energy there because it's either this or that. So it's either staying a secret or staying in this old way or it's bringing to light and it's kind of, you know, it's it's a quincunx, it's a yacht, it can be. Ultimately, I would say whatever happens is likely for our highest good, as always. Um, however, there are always people and things that also look at astrology and try to steer it in a negative way or they try to do it for their own personal whatever, instead of doing it from the heart. And Mercury is in Leo, you know, the sign of that unconditional love, that expression from the heart. So maybe that's kind of really what we need to focus on in this energy as well. Uh, the other things that are happening on this day, take the focus off Mercury here, is Venus will be in a sesqui square to Uranus retrograde. So yes, Uranus is now retrograde in Taurus. So again, this is going over these old spaces of changes that we know we've already needed to make, right? Uranus dealing with aspects of change, rebellion, shaking things up, right? This is the stuff again of things, and it's retrograde. So we've already gone, we're, we've already been in this space. We already know that these are things that need to shift and change, right? And with Venus here, in this sesqui square to this, this sesqui square is like a a square and a half, almost like a super square. It is a minor aspect in astrology. Although if you've watched my videos before, you know that when I speak of minor transits, uh, they're actually not so minor. They can really play actually quite a big role and probably, well, not probably, they should be paid more attention to. In my opinion, at least, uh, some people may disagree. There's a lot to astrology, so I can see why people mainly stick to major aspects because when you start focusing on minor ones, it gets you know, you get videos that are quite long, which this one will probably be. 
Um, anyway, so with this sesqui square here, this super square, this is bringing to light maybe some aspect of change regarding Venus related themes. I would say specifically surrounding relationships since Venus is in her home, home sign of Libra. However, Venus also rules Taurus. So this is making big shifts and changes, I think with a focus on maybe what we need to let go of, excuse me, in terms of codependency and relationships. So whenever I burp or say do something like that, it's usually an emphasis on something. So I think that could be a big key thing uh, at play here, uh, especially since Venus is conjunct Juno for which represents, you know, contracts, relationships, committed, any kind of committed partnership uh, that can be business partnerships and such as well. It's also sitting here conjunct Black Moon Lilith, where we feel outcasted in terms of our relationships and still in conjunction to the South Node. So there's likely here something regarding our relationships that, that, you know, needs to be let go of. There is Eros here as well, which can deal with a sexual desire. Um, <laughs> So that could certainly something that could come up, especially regarding change or uniqueness or expression in some way regarding this and something that's uh, pushing for a change or even something to be revealed in some way. Because remember that Mercury Yacht is happening on this day as well. So something regarding uh, that. Uh, the other thing that's happening here is the Sun will be in biquintile to Chiron. So a biquintile is a very feminine type of aspect, very creative. Um, and it's usually something that's happening behind the scenes and can almost be seen as faded in some ways, as it's something that's usually seen as unknown or something happen, happening behind there. But with Chiron, which is also retrograde, and there's a lot of retrogrades going on here, we're dealing with these old spaces of maybe where we've been hurt before and also where we need to go over again, where we need to heal regarding our self and our self-identity and even our self-expression. Um, so this could be triggering in some ways regarding that. Uh, the sun is here in Virgo, so this could be very detail oriented. Virgo is also related to healing as well, uh, mostly though on a physical level, whereas its opposite sign of Pisces is more so on a not so tangible level. It's more of like mental health, emotional health, like spiritual, that kind of stuff. It's that which isn't like you can't feel, you can't see, although you can feel your emotions, you can, you know, your thoughts affect your emotions, how you feel, those kinds of things. So that's what I mean. It's more of kind of what's hidden in terms of Pisces, whereas Virgo is more around the realms of like physical health, herbalism, eating the right foods, those kinds of things. So I think there could be a healing aspect, maybe even behind the scenes surrounding that, right? Maybe in a physical sense, in terms of maybe I don't know, eating the right foods for health, but I feel like this is more around detail-oriented stuff uh, surrounding, um, like, looking at the details of things, maybe noticing things more, and how that, and maybe how healing our self-expression and our own self can affect our physical health as well. But again, this is kind of like faded stuff. It's behind the scenes. It's very, like, feminine, nurturing, um, that kind of energy uh, that is coming through there. So I think that's a bit of an interesting day there on Sunday with that Yod. There's likely something surrounding relationships involving that as well. Maybe certain revealings or communications coming through. Remember, Mercury also rules Virgo. So again, that could relate to that biquintile there to Chiron. There could be stuff that's coming out that could seem like hurtful as well, uh, but that ultimately is involved in, in healing our identity in some way or self-expression in some way as well. So there's this idea surrounding self-expression, identity, uh, how it relates to our relationships, how we may be felt outcast and the changes that we need to make within those relationships uh, surrounding the day on Sunday. Okay, so let's move on to Monday here, the 9th. I'll just shift ahead one day here. And let's take a look. Uh, so this is the day Mercury comes back into Virgo. Uh, it's not quite here yet because I have this at very early morning, uh, but we're sitting at 29 degrees Leo here early morning. So it does come into Virgo, what's the exact time? 12.49 a.m. So within less than an hour of which I have this chart. So by the time you wake up on Monday the 9th, Mercury will have moved back into Virgo. Uh, so again, the shift of Mercury and Virgo. Again, Virgo is that day-to-day -day life detail-oriented type energy, dealing with health, all those, all those like kind of like little things, right? 
Um, and Mercury will, of course, on this day, uh, be biquintile to the North Node here uh, in Aries. So again, I feel like what what kind of is coming through here is with Mercury starting to begin this move out of shadow with this biquintile to the North Node in Aries. Um, this is Virgo is immutable energy. Aries is a cardinal energy. So this is about kind of like endings and new beginnings. And I'm going to get into that a little bit more uh, later this week once we get to the quarter moon. Uh, and later in this video, I guess, which will be happening later in the week that I'm talking about, I think is what I meant. <laughs> um, so with this biquintile here, it's about kind of the there's stuff going on maybe behind the scenes, like this creative energy that we haven't really seen, but that has been happening um, that may seem even somewhat faded that is kind of happening to maybe start the end of this certain cycle to shift us into moving into this new direction, which may be regarding our self, our identity, and maybe surrounding either day-to-day -day life or some kind of details or something that needs to come out of that, or even physical healing in some way. Right, as that may uh, may uh, come through here. Um, okay, so that's kind of it for Monday. Although, yeah, I was gonna say maybe some of Sunday's energy may be carrying over into this, uh, just because you know nothing in terms of our how we could consider like business days and stuff. We may not see. Uh, the outcomes of maybe Sunday's energy until Monday, till once that stuff kind of starts to come out. Um, and again, that could be with this biquintile, and maybe stuff that's happened behind the scenes or stuff that's already happened that maybe seems kind of faded in some way. Um, and then it starts to come through on this day to really start to push forward in a sense, right? Because Mercury, Mercury leaves shadow at about four degrees. So when we start to enter Virgo, as Mercury picks up speed, we're really starting to begin this shift forward. And maybe this work that is happening behind the scenes could be even on this day to help with this uh, shift, like I said, that we'll talk about in, in a minute here. All right, so let's move then to Tuesday the 10th. So on Tuesday the 10th, the only thing that I'm seeing here is a Mercury quintile Jupiter. So Mercury at one degree Virgo. And where are we here in this quintile to um, Jupiter there? Still conjunct Uranus's North Node as well. So this could be expansion of communication, maybe surrounding change or even like a higher knowledge, something coming through in some way. But since Uranus is, is retrograde, um, this is changes and stuff that we've already needed to make where we need to expand in terms of... Um, our mind, what we perceive, think, communicate in these details and in these, you know, communication as well. As like I said, Mercury is ready to begin to leave shadow and we're heading into this, into basically like a, a new space outside of that Mercury retrograde shadow. We're also heading into eclipse season. So we're kind of basically already there um, after this week. Or, so this week we have the quarter moon and then the next one will be a... Um, sorry, full moon lunar eclipse um, in Pisces, right? So the nodes are at the end of the Libra Aries axis. I believe they shift January 2025, near the end of January. I don't remember the exact date. Um, so this eclipse of this Virgo Pisces energy might be giving a glimpse of what that nodal axis shift might uh, start to feel like as we head into the beginning of next year. And there's lots shifting uh, next year as well. So this is, we're kind of like winding down into these, the end of this kind of stuff and preparing to move um, in kind of, I almost want to say many new directions next year. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look here then at the 11th. So September 11th uh, looks to be kind of, like I said, the, the most, maybe one of the most interesting days of this week. So we're going to have this quarter moon. So it's going to happen overnight. I have the chart set at it here at 12.05 a.m. Central Time. Um, well, Central Time in Canada, that's probably a different in the U.S. So that would be about 1 a.m. Central Time in the U.S. And you can just figure out from there where you're at. Um, but as we can see here, so we're going to have this first quarter moon. So the sun in Virgo, the moon in Sagittarius. So on its own, we're dealing with the detailed stuff versus the bigger picture. Um, however, 
This quarter moon is actually going to be forming a T-square with Saturn and Jupiter. So you can see the square here to the Sun and Jupiter. You can also see the opposition here to Saturn. And if we actually put the focus on Saturn, you can see it's square to the moon and square to Jupiter. So it's forming a T, or sorry, not a T-square. Well, there is a T-square here to Jupiter and the moon, but I mean a grand square, which is made up of two T-squares. Sorry for the confusion on that. My brain is not wanting to catch up, I guess. Um, so yeah, so what I mean is a grand square, not a T-square. So, <laughs> yeah, what was I saying here? Um, anyway, so there's this grand square that is happening between uh, these four energies, and this is what is known as a mutable grand square. So all of these signs are mutable signs or mutable energies. What is mutable? Mutable is changeable, um, basically changeable. Um, I kind of brings an end to things in a way, right? You have cardinal signs, then you have fixed signs, then you have mutable signs. And then after mutable, you have another cardinal sign, then another fixed sign, then another mutable sign. So cardinal is moving forward, fixed is staying fixed on something, and mutable is changeable or bringing an ending to something. So with this fixed grand square, um, we're dealing a lot of these squares and oppositions that are pushing for action, pushing for change, pushing for something. An immutable energy, it's, well, change, but it's also that change that brings an end to something. What I kind of got earlier prior to doing this um, reading, sometimes things come through prior, and that this is basically the end of a cycle. So there's something that is ending here with this basically mutable grand square involving this quarter moon um, that's bringing in an end to something. There's an end of a cycle that is occurring here, and it's bringing kind of this shift uh, towards this new beginning type energy. Uh, also on this day, like I said, I believe it is on, is it on this day that Mercury comes out of shadow? I believe it's the 11th or 12th. So Mercury, let's see how fast Mercury is moving here. Vent is it gonna tell me? It used to tell me on here. Coordinates, there we go. So it's roughly one and a half degrees a day. So we're almost at two, so yeah. Mercury does move out of shadow by the end of the day. I did look at this before, and I don't remember exactly if it was later on the 11th or the 12th, but it looks like on this day Mercury does move out of shadow. Regardless, it's happening either the end of this day or the very next day. So what I'm trying to get at with this is that with this mutable grand square and with that Mercury shifting out of shadow, we're moving into a new space now. So whatever happened during that Mercury retrograde, whatever was repeated, whatever was coming up for review, all of that stuff, there's not only is that shadow period over, that retrograde over with whatever was happening there, but now we almost have this shift in change and the end of this cycle in some way um, that is occurring. Uh, and because this is involving a cycle of the moon, this is right before we're going to have um, that full moon lunar eclipse uh, in that Virgo Pisces axis, right? So we're in eclipse season, and again, this is cycling that the end of a certain cycle. Then we're going to highlight that release on that full moon eclipse. And what's interesting is then the next eclipse after that will be a, a new moon in Libra, the solar eclipse, excuse me. So pay attention to kind of maybe what I've just said that or what I'm saying here, and that with that Libra being a cardinal sign, we're now moving to step forward in a new direction in that way. So we're reaching like this ending of a cycle and then a new beginning uh, that is occurring here uh, with these eclipses and within this eclipse season. And I think with this quarter moon, it's really starting to give that, that push to that, the end of that cycle to begin that release again because this that eclipse is happening in his mutable energy as well. The first one and then the second one will be in cardinal energy and again move so moving forward in a new direction. So with this energy as well, if we kind of want to dive into this a little bit more regarding the planets involved, uh, like I said, just the quarter square itself is revolving these details surrounding the big picture. Of course, when we're dealing with Pisces energy as well, um, that can deal with the bigger picture as the traditional ruler of Pisces is Jupiter, which is the modern ruler 
Hermontus, the ruler of Sagittarius. And of course, Jupiter, which is involved in this grand square, is in Gemini. So we're dealing a lot with Jupiterian energy as well as this mercurial energy. So this is very much expanding in new directions um, while looking at the details, communicating, and I almost want to say in a sense speeding things up because Gemini and Mercury can be very quick. And with Mercury now moving at full speed once it's out of shadow, moving at its normal pace again, where things are really going to start to change and get going, right? And the planet of change Uranus, which is now retrograde, this is surrounding stuff that we already know that we've needed to make, changes we already know we've needed to make. Pluto retrograde in Capricorn, ending these old things that we already know need to be ended. Like I said in my, I think it was way back at the beginning of this year when Pluto first started to move into Aquarius, and I said that last this last 29 degrees of Capricorn before we move in is the final nail in the coffin of the old world. This is looking at that nail that's tried to make you've hammered it in and it's kind of squeaked its way up a bit and you're like no 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 bang bang get back in there done right that's what this is and i almost in my head i was almost wanted to say we can't fuck this up all right in a sense as let's not fuck this up but also in a way that i feel like we can't fuck this up because in essence, this is something that really needs to occur and might even be pushed from a higher level in a way. I don't know why that just came through. It's like, we can't fuck this up. However you want to take that is however you want to take that, okay? Let's just leave it at that. That's what wanted to come through, I suppose, so we'll leave it at that. All right, so again, I feel like this is kind of bigger energy that is kind of coming through here. With Saturn in Pisces, though, I've always considered Saturn in Pisces the dissolution of malefic energy. Remember, Pisces, anything goes. And it's a mutable sign. Remember, it's changeable. It's malleable. And with Saturn dealing with that structure, even karma. So this could be karmic endings, karmic cycles that are coming to an end, right? Saturn rules, you know, it's the lord of time, if you want to consider, like, like ancient astrology. Um, but what this is, is the dissolution of maybe those cycles that are ending when you deal with karma, time, all of that stuff. The ending of certain cycles, the ending of certain structures, especially with Pluto here in Saturn, sign of Capricorn, that's, you know, the transformation and the dissolution of these things. It's a cycle that is ending and something that needs to, to end here. Um, and of course, with this Jupiterian energy, and even if we include Pisces in that, that's that expansion into new areas. It's malleable, it's changeable, it's seeing all these different ways. Okay, I think, think I've got that. Another thing too, Saturn in Pisces, it's like Capricorn is structure. Pisces is the realization that that structure doesn't really exist. It's just um, a creation. Right? And that creation comes from that imagination of Pisces, right? So yeah. All right. Also on this day, Venus is going to be in quincunx to Saturn. So there could be a frustration here. Like I said, regarding our relationships, still Venus with this conjunction, like I said, Eros, Juno, Black Moon, Lilith, maybe where we felt outcast. There could be aspects of codependency dealt with here. There could be sexual desire aspects that are related here or desires in terms of our relationships, in terms of maybe committed relationships or whatever is going on with this that's frustrating with this Saturn here in Pisces. So again, this dissolution of this malefic energy, there could be something maybe karmic that occurs. I feel like this is more like a, maybe an ending of karma, um, but there could be some karmic stuff that may be occurring here, um, or a dissolution or this malleable change within these Venus-type energies likely specifically surrounding aspects of relationships is from just from what I see that's going on here um, that could be end up being quite frustrating um, that may involve some kind of integration as well as you know some change in, in some way uh, and then we also have Mercury here will be in sextile to Mars which is now in Cancer so Mars in Cancer the passion that desire is for comfort for uh, emotions for what's going to make us, you know, feel cozy and those kind of Cancerian things. But they could be more of, you know, on an emotional level. Uh, the moon here with this, you know, quarter moon T square being in Sagittarius, maybe the expansion of some of that. Um, but with this sextile to Mars, again, there could be this desire to communicate, uh, maybe some aspect of 
regarding details, um, the little things as it sits in Virgo here, but maybe coming from a more emotional space. Um, there could be some maybe even anger that comes through with that, although just be careful with that, especially with Mercury in a mercurial sign and then with Mars in Cancer. Just because Cancer is like an introverted, you know, homebody doesn't necessarily mean that you can't piss off a Cancer, okay? And with Mars here, that emotional outburst to just kind of be careful. Just be careful with this energy, although a sextile is generally positive. So this could be the passionate expression of uh, something that occurs there as well that, you know, might deal with this uh, quincunx and relationship stuff that occurs that may need, there could be a structure or contract or something that maybe needs to be dissolved here in some way. Could be where somebody felt outcast or where you felt outcast in terms of relationships. There could be an aspect of desire sexually or something that occurs here, as well as an aspect of commitment. And there's some kind of frustrating frustration here that um, is occurring. And interesting, this Venus is in a semi-square to Mercury's North Node, which is also in Virgo. So there's a detailed aspect of that coming through too. All right, so. I think that's probably like the biggest day of this week would be on the 11th. Uh, let's go to the 12th. Uh, on the 12th here is when we're going to have the Sun in square to Jupiter uh, in this exact square. So again, this is still triggering that grand cross, that grand square. However, the Moon has moved on, uh, but there still is this opposition uh, between the Sun and Saturn. And with the Sun in exact square to Jupiter here, it is Basically, with this square, it's creating this T-square as well with Saturn. So this could also be an aspect of difficult energy. Um, anything de dealing with Saturn can feel difficult. Excuse me, that's coming through. So again, this emphasis on that. There could be a difficult energy here, uh, especially we're dealing with mutable energy again. This is a mutable T-square uh, with Jupiter here in Gemini. And again, uh, when you talk about T-square, sometimes the answer to that harsh energy is the the um, area where that where it feels empty so in terms of what would make it into a grand cross which would be the Sagittarius energy in terms of expansion so Sun square Jupiter it's this is very mercurial very detail oriented communicative wanting to move at a quick pace looking at the little things but where can we expand in that maybe what do we need to look at at, at the details and communicate more regarding an expansion in terms of where we need to expand, right? Some people would say yeah, it's it's either one or the other. You look at the details or you look at the bigger picture. But this is kind of like, where can we look at the details in order to expand into the bigger picture? What are the details trying to tell us in which we can expand, right? Just because something is a square or that signs normally square doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. It just means that, you know, maybe that is... That is something that needs to come into balance. So you need to take action on to try to um, fix it in, in some way, right? So, or find balance in some way. And again, with this T-square involving Saturn, it, it's a malleable. There's, there's this mutable energy that's going on here. Maybe a dissolution of the structure or a contract or, or something that needs to occur. There's an expansion that needs to occur. And I feel like that relates to this Pisces energy as anything goes in Pisces. Pisces, there's no restriction. And with Sagittarius ruled by Jupiter, it's very expansive. So it's this very ex expansive type of energy that is trying to occur here and regarding these details, regarding communication, regarding what is finding out. Whatever is coming to mind, whatever details, whatever is going on, there's also an expansiveness to this that, that needs to occur as well, right? Like I said, it could even be finding that balance between the little things and the bigger picture, but regarding these little things in these communication that help in the expansiveness and moving through this. And with Saturn here, this could be a hard lesson. This could be, like I said, dissolution of that malefic energy that could come through in a hard lesson. Um, however, ultimately, there's something that needs to be dissolved and changed here. And like I said, with Pluto, now retrograded back into Capricorn. These are things that we've known that have needed to transform and change. They're now coming up uh, to change here in this dissolution and this change of this energy in some way. Uh, also peaking on this day is Mars in quintile to Chiron. So Mars, the ruler of Aries, where Chiron is at. So there's this idea of self, this drive, that kind of thing with this quintile, which dealing with it 
especially with Mars and Cancer now dealing with it on an emotional level. Uh, this could likely be a bit more behind the scenes of kind of feeling like you could be feeling something. There could be a feeling of maybe being triggered or a feeling of healing something maybe emotionally, but that occurs behind the scenes in some way that is coming through, that is trying to work its way through through you. This Remember, this is kind of like a very feminine energy that is coming through. It's work that needs to be done kind of behind the scenes, um, but it's very creative. It might be coming through in a certain way to even help us uh, to be healing in some way, even though it may not feel like it at the time. We're dealing with Mars energy, especially with this Cancer and this Aries. This is very cardinal energy, so it wants to push forward. It wants to heal, but the stuff that can come up um, I feel like it, it might even be emotionally triggering in some sense. Um, so just kind of be careful with this, but this is more of like hidden behind the scenes type of energy. This is kind of maybe like crying in your room at night, but to release to heal in, in some sense. If that it kind of, if you know, that makes any kind of sense. Um, also on this day too, we're going to have uh, Mercury and Biquintile to Pluto. Um, so again, this could be regarding communication or looking at details. Uh, in some way um, surrounding this transformation again that needs to occur this getting that nail back into the coffin of these things that are just no longer serving us when it comes to aspects of control aspects of old structures in our lives old commitments all of that stuff that's really you know being dissolved here and needing to be transformed right and again this is behind the scenes creative type energy so we may feel it or know it in our lives if we're the ones doing it maybe other people don't see it or maybe things that are actually happening behind the scenes that maybe we become aware of that have been happening uh, that now we become aware of that you know creatively or almost seems like fate coming through in some way regarding that uh, transformation there all right so that is thursday of this week let's move to friday friday the 13th interesting all right, so on Friday the 13th, we're going to have Mercury here in Quincunx now to the North Node. Um, so again, with this Quincunx, this is an integration, right? Mercury is completely out of shadow now. We're now at six degrees Virgo, completely, completely out of this, <laughs> right? Uh, I just want to see where the moon's at now. Yeah, and now in Capricorn. So we're, we're approaching this, this eclipse now. And again, with this quincunx, there's likely some kind of frustration here uh, with a movement forward. So we're dealing with mutable and cardinal energy. North Node and Aries, we're wanting to move forward. We're wanting to take action. We're wanting to do this stuff. Mars is now in Cancer, though. Feels a bit emotional. Could be, you know, you're wanting more to take action more on how you feel in terms of that drive. Again, maybe this is something to pay attention to. And with this Mercury in Virgo, there could be like very detailed, very like day-to-day -day stuff that's kind of like almost maybe even getting in the way. It's like you want to move forward, you want to you want to do these things, you want to take action on how you feel. You feel guided to maybe do something, but there's this little shit that's just absolutely getting in the way. But we need to deal with these little things in order to be able to take the action and move forward and how we're feeling to move forward um, in that way now, right? Virgo can be really annoying. Um, but it can also be like, okay, you got to clean this up. You got to fix this. You got to do this because you take care of these little things now. It's going to help you to move forward, right? This mutable energy then helps the next cardinal energy you to step forward and move in that direction as well, right? So taking care of these little things and it can be quite fr frustrating because this is involving our movement forward and maybe where we want to take action and move forward with ourselves and how we feel. Uh, but there's a frustration here. There's an integration that needs to occur. So, okay, let's move forward. Let's look at these details and how we can fix these certain things so that we can move forward in some way uh, as well regarding this. And of course, with this, uh, there is a semi-sextile to the south node as well. So this could be looking at these aspects of either relationship or codependency. Mercury south node is here as well. So again, we're dealing with these mercurial things. There's like a strong mercurial aspect to this um, in terms of where we maybe want to move forward. I think that quincunx is probably a bit more powerful. We're going to probably feel that in a bit more of a frustrating way, so we're going to notice that a bit more. Um, however, this doesn't necessarily have to be that as long as we're willing to look at the details and fix these things in order to be able to move forward. Remember, it's kind of like when you deal with a frustrating situation, it's your reaction to it that's you know you can choose your reaction to it choose to deal with it work with it and integrate it and move forward or you can just you know 
have a breakdown. <laughs> Sometimes you need the breakdown, um, and then that can help you release so you can do these things. Um, but again, it's just how you react to it and how we can get through these types of energies. Uh, but with the semi-sextile here to the south node, again, south node Libra releasing aspects of codependency, certain aspects of relationships, details regarding maybe those relationships and those things, codependency, finding appropriate balance uh, between certain things could be a thing with this uh, Libra stuff. With a semi-sextile, this could either go in good way or bad way, right? So it's either this energy is working together or it's at odds with each other. So you can either bring an end to something to bring a new beginning to try that malleable to shift and change certain things to bring maybe another balance to those things while looking at the details or through those details. Or this can be extremely frustrating as the details piss you off and you just don't, then it's knocking you out of balance and whatever else. And then it's really shining what you need to let go of and all of these other things. All right, so just be mindful of that. Uh, Mercury is also peaking in a sesqui square here to Chiron. Remember, that's a super square. So again, these aspects to the nodes of what I just talked about. Now the super square to Chiron, or the sesqui square to Chiron, we're dealing with, again, where we felt wounded, where we need to learn to heal within our own selves, our own independence, our own action, where we feel, you know, feel to move forward. Um, but our own, this is regarding our own self, our own self wounds. And this sesqui square is something that can't be swept under the rug anymore, and it's looking at the details of those things with this Mercury stuff. So I feel like this mercurial energy and focusing on these detail-oriented aspects and fixing, Virgo likes to fix, clean, and get things ready. It changes it in a way that brings it back to like its natural, like healed state so that you can move forward, you can do these things. But there's something here that can't be swept under the rug anymore, especially regarding where we've been hurt, where we need to heal, where we need to move forward um, in that way. Also on this day, we're going to have Uranus in Sesqui Square to um, Juno here. So there's something that needs to change, likely within again, relationships and partnerships. Okay, there's we've kind of had with these north node Aries, south node Libra, a very long time of basically a Venus retrograde. Venus hasn't been retrograde and will not retrograde this year, um, but that's kind of basically what it's been feeling like with the south node in Libra, a Venus ruled sign. There's certain things that you have to let go of and changes that need to be made. So with this sesqui square here to this Juno dealing with not just relationship contracts, but business contracts. And I would almost say anything regarding people, because we're in the sign of Libra now. So anything regarding the people and any type of relationship between people, these are changes that we've known that we've needed to make going over these old spaces. Hey, have you reviewed this? Hey, have you seen this? There's a trine here with this Uranus to the sun in Virgo. Looking at those details, looking at these little things, being like, oh, now, especially with this retrograde, re-reviewing, oh, let's look at that. That's a detail I didn't notice before. That's that. I was getting the feeling we needed to change this. Now we got to change this. Contracts changing, things changing, relationships changing. You know, there's desires changing, or desires changing maybe based off desires as well. Again, we've got arrows here. Venus is still in this spot, right? So... We need to, you know, have a look at that. But there's likely shifts and changes. And again, sesqui square, something that can't be swept under the rug any longer. You need to force. There's a, like a, it's like an engineering fault. There's a, there's a, there's something's faulty here that needs to change. Just with the sesqui square alone. Not to mention that Uranus is involved here, right? With these uh, relationships or contractual relationships, and that that can be marriages, but it's not just marriages, it's business contracts, anything regarding a, some type of contractual partnership or relationship. All right, so that is Friday. Let's take a look at Saturday. Saturday the 14th, so Moon comes into Aquarius, um, and obviously overnight Moon is going to conjunct Pluto, so Change, 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 transformation. Uh, so we're going to have Mercury here uh, in a semi-sextile to Black Moon Lilith. And Black Moon Lilith is on the south node here. So again, 
where I've been outcast in terms of partnerships, relationships, finding balance, finding justice, finding peace with this, uh, with the semi-sextile to Mercury and Virgo. Again, communication, looking at these details. This could be day-to-day -day life stuff. This could be dealing with coworkers and stuff where we felt outcast. This could be dealing with just our relationships where we felt outcast, looking at the details of these things, communicating these things, bringing awareness to these things, fixing these things of where we felt outcast in terms of our relationships, being like, okay, what the hell are we gonna do about this now? Okay, the sun um, in Queen Kunx to Chiron peaks on this day as well. So again, there's a frustration here regarding, this is very, I feel like very healing stuff. Like I said, Virgo can be very healing. Chiron, the wounded healer in Aries, the sense of self, looking at these details. This could be physical health. This could be bringing awareness to things, looking at these details. Our day-to-day -day lives, our day-to-day -day schedules. Are we being treated like shit at work in our day-to-day? -day? What's going on here? Even if it's not work in our day to day, at home in our day to day, are we being treated like shit? You know, where we felt outcast in terms of our relationships, in terms of the details. Are we the ones cleaning the house all day and while somebody else just does do anything? Where you felt outcast in terms of relationships, codependencies, those types of things. Okay, so there again, there's a frustration here regarding some detail oriented stuff, little things, Virgo and themes regarding this aspect of self, where we need to heal, what we need to relook at in terms of healing and an integration that needs to occur here through this frustration. Sometimes this feels like one or the other. Well, it's either this or it's this. It's either I look at these details or I do this, or it's I'm gonna be hurt with self, or I need to heal this, or, but I feel like this is just surrounding aspects of really healing, healing ourselves, transforming, looking at these details, just like I've already said before. And, Looks like lastly for this week, uh, we're going to have Venus in trying to Jupiter. So again, we've got this cardinal mutable energy. Venus in trying to Jupiter, these are the two benefics in trying to each other. I feel like there's a change, uh, a mutable shift and transformation. I want to say shift and transformation. Not sure if that's necessarily what that is, although we're dealing with mutable and cardinal energy here, so it likely could be. Uh, and with this trine, um, there could be a positive change even regarding uh, these relationships and things that do occur. So even though I'm saying there's there's all these aspects regarding our relationships or these people that are shifting and changing or whatever, but ultimately I think in the end, this might end up just being a positive thing, even though it may not feel that way in going through all of this stuff. Right, so Venus in her home sign of Libra, Jupiter in Gemini, there could be an aspect of communication that comes through, speeding things up in a sense as well. There could be an expansion of the mind that occurs here, expansion of curiosity, expansion of things in new in new directions that come into our awareness, uh, surrounding these aspects of relationship, peace, balance, um, as well. We still got Venus conjunct, excuse me, conjunct Eros here regarding desires, especially surrounding maybe uh, relationships, committed relationships, contracts, those kinds of things. All right, so that really uh, concludes it for this week. Um, thank you for watching. I hope this video uh, was helpful. Um, I appreciate everyone watching. Uh, again, hopefully I am back now for good. Um, like I said, if I miss a week, I miss a week. Whatever, I'll just jump on it again when I can come back to it. My readings are available on Etsy. Link in the description if you're on YouTube. On TikTok, it's there. You just can't click on it. Um, but it's mysticalmarkastro.etsy.com. Okay, thank you very much. Have a great week. Have, 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 can't even talk. <laughs> thank you very much. Have a great week, everyone. Take care. Bye for now.